Here's to watch the Breakfast Central or News Central, wondering what uh, I'm doing here. Well, I'll tell you later on. Let's talk about what is indeed on the front burner this morning as well. The US dollar climbed on Wednesday, and you saw it in the papers as well, retaining much of its earlier gains. As minutes from the American Federal Reserve's uh, May meeting revealed that the majority of members uh, thought half percentage point rate hikes would be appreciated or will appreciate in June and, of course, in July. And a stronger greenback is indeed wrecking havoc on many economies in Africa. The Kenya Association of Manufacturers and Industry Lobby Group said that importers in East Africa's largest economy are struggling to import raw materials because they can't access dollars at the official rate of about 116 shillings per dollar, forcing them to buy at a rate of 120 shillings or higher. Uh, well, the story is not so different here in Nigeria, where uh, the Naira opened at uh, about 418.54% uh, 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 to the dollar Tuesday, May 31st, 2022, and closed at 419.50 per dollar on Tuesday as well. Well, even though the dollar opened in the parallel market for about 606 uh, uh, per dollar on Wednesday, the CBN does not recognize the parallel market, otherwise known as the black market. Well, joining us on Breakfast Central this morning, we do have um, Nitish Sharma. He is the CEO of TP Global FX. Uh, he is a data scientist with over a decade experience in the financial market with years of experience in investment from Cyprus Security Exchange in accordance with the European Commission and Global Best Practice. Uh, we want to thank you so much for taking time out to be here with us. We also do have, uh, uh, of course, thank you so much for being here as well. Um, uh, let me also quickly state that um, Olive is still around the corner. Olive is here with me as well. Olive, uh, I need to find out if you're there. Yes, absolutely. I am. Thank you very much for joining us. And we also have joining uh, our second guest. We have the country manager of TP Global F FX, Chooks Obiri. Thank you very much, Chooks, for joining us. We look forward to having an interesting and a very important conversation about the Naira and the dollar, especially how the dollar affects African currencies. All right, uh, over the years, we've seen the value of the Naira being, you know, it's been eroding against the do dollar currencies, especially the US dollar. Before we talk about the solution, let's talk about what the causes are in this regard. Let's throw that question to Sharma. Sharma, let's, let's hear you. What do you think the causes are? There are many causes to this. All right. First of the biggest causes is unemployment. We need to have more people employed in the private sector. You need to have more <clears throat> FDIs coming into the country. Nigeria needs to show itself as a safe country. One of the biggest things. So the more money that comes into the country, the more money that comes into the system, the better the Naira is going to get. We have to realize why is the dollar getting appreciated against the Naira? Why are investors losing confidence in the Naira? So that's the core problem. We need to fix it. Mm. We need to fix it. Chooks, Obiri, what's your, what's your thought to this? Because, I mean, sometime on Breakfast Central, he had said that we need to dissect the reasons why um, the Naira is indeed falling. What say you on that? Okay, so um, <clears throat> just as um, my CEO has rightly said, um, besides unemployment, uh, I think the federal government, okay, uh, fiscal policies, bank policies, uh, monetary policies, okay, needs to um, be more favorable, you know, for uh, foreign direct investment, like he has said. Because uh, the whole idea is to look for ways by which, um, you know, the Naira can be attractive, you know, to, to everyone out there. Okay, um, we need to look at exportation because, um, as you can see, <coughs> the, the Nigerian economy uh, is basically um, import-based. We import basically everything. So we find out that because we are importing everything, there's more demand for the dollar against the Naira. And this is just causing, you know, the value of the dollar to just keep shooting up. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, conventional reasoning uh, dictates uh, an increase in exports and says it would solve this. Uh, do you agree? <laughs> do you agree that this will fix the problem? Start with you, Sharma. Not. It's. This can be one part which can fix the problem, but there has to be much. There has to be many other things which needs to be done. <clears throat> like I said, you, Nigeria needs to win back investors' confidence. You need the money coming into the system. You need to show that Nigeria is a safe country. You can do business here. All right, you have to follow countries like the UAE, which makes ease of business. So, you know, which makes business very ease. You know, you can do it with very ease. So, you need to work on those things. And then, when the money comes in, the country grows, the economy grows. See, it's a cycle. Mm. You must understand that. So, with the money coming in, there'll be more jobs being generated. More jobs being generated, then you know, uh, you'll have more output. 
So the cycle has to keep going. Right now what is happening is with the Naira getting devalued, the imports, like uh, Chuck's rightly said, you know, the US dollar is going up ahead. So, and since you guys import so much, the imports are getting more and more expensive. Then the retail market is going to get affected. So the inflation goes up immediately. Mm. All right, so the, something like, for example, the glass, which would have cost you 1,000 Nairas last year, now cost you 1,500 Nairas. Yeah. But uh, is the salaries increasing on the same level? No, not at all. That's right? a problem. That's a problem. I was reading yesterday that inflation is around about 17-18%, which is quite high. That's high, very high. So to combat everything, money needs to be generated. It's, the only, it's one of the biggest fix. To make it very simple, you need to generate the funds. And it all starts from there. I see. Olive, what say you about this? Remember, we're talking about this. Uh, <laughs> we're having this conversation just yesterday. Your thoughts? <laughs> very important. You know, it's very important that we win back investor confidence uh, here in our country. We need to ensure that more people outside the country, around the continent, you know, see, see Nigeria as a safe place, see Africa as a safe place for them to bring their businesses. And it's in the kind of policies that we make. But let's talk about elections. It's election season and some, if not many Nigerians, still believe that a savior will come one day in the form of our president and change the state of the nation for better. Do you share the same sentiments? Do you, uh, what are your thoughts on the roles of leadership, you know, precedence, political leadership, in terms of making uh, the dollar, or rather the Naira, stronger again Chooks, you want to take that okay, so um <laughs> i'll just uh, give a brief um, overview and then i'll allow my um ceo to continue on that okay so uh, i think um it's good to 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 trust god and we realize that most nigerians <laughs> I, I mean come on you and i know that nigeria is a very religious We're always country trusting god. okay so <laughs> but but if you look at it over the years you know we've always had that belief that someday you know a savior will come and um everything will just look good okay I, i'm sorry to say this okay in the last two previous elections that was our anticipation and then we could hear the mantra change 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 so we're expecting a change okay i'm sorry to say this but it's like uh the kind of change that we were anticipating is different from what we are currently seeing so the truth is this if we keep having that hope okay we might not eventually um see that savior okay so the idea basically is uh for every nigerian to see himself as a savior of himself. So until you begin to have that perception, okay, you keep hoping and putting your future into the hands of someone else. And, and you know just what might happen when you keep doing that. I, I see. I don't know if my CEO so, might want you, to answer I, that. I completely agree. We have to stop looking for the savior. We have to stop watching movies. <laughs> I mean, I mean, with all these great movies talking about, oh, the savior is coming, the savior is coming. Please, you are your own savior. All I want people to do is educate yourself, work hard, have a good skill set, increase your skill sets. And once you do that, you become your own savior. So saviors, like they say it in the flights, you know, put your mask on first and save yeah. someone else. Oh, yeah. So be a savior yourself first, save yourself, and then you can help the others. That's all you need to do. Mm. It's very simple. Do not rely on your politicians. I mean, with all due respects to every politician in the yeah. country, they can only do little. We must also understand that, you know, yes. even if a politician wants to do to really revamp the whole country, he will face tremendous challenges. Absolutely. So instead of blaming them, why don't we contribute to it? With, if every person decided, listen, from today onwards, I'm going to be the best person I can be. If I'm going to increase my skills, if I'm going to get a job, if I'm going to contribute to the economy. Next three, four years, Nigeria can be one of the strongest economies in Africa. And Nigeria has the potential. Look at the amount of youth in the country. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that, that's, that's deep there. Really, really deep. But let's also take a look at this. I mean, um, Nigeria has a large and growing population of youth, like you've rightly mentioned. And uh, these youths have been creating wealth uh, with, with several digital innovation solutions. I mean, if you take a look at all the uh, digital uh, platforms, uh, companies, of course, they've been headed by youths. Now, can this help to actually change the poverty rate in the country and or do you think it would diverse the income generation uh, and it would change things uh, looking at the fact that the youths are here? It can be. We must understand that now we're getting into a global age of technology. All right. When you talk about blockchain technology, when you talk about cryptocurrencies, when you talk about NFT, now these things are very new right now. Just as we had the uh, Y2K boom or the computer boom in the 1990s, the NFT boom is coming. The blockchain boom is coming. Metaverse is coming. 
So right now it's open fields for everyone. All countries, all the youth of every country, they are at the same level. So who actually gets the right information, who gets the right skill sets, who delivers, they can actually take it ahead. We are, everyone is at the, play, uh, the same level. It's a level playing field right now. Mm. I, we can't say that, you know, Americans are ahead of us or, you know, the Australians are ahead of us. No, nobody is. Everyone is on a level. Everyone is the same level. Same level. And this is one of the rarest chances that uh, countries like Nigeria and India have got to really get to the next level. Mm. See, Olive, what say you? Um, before we wrap up, I'd like to ask a very quick question, and I'm directing this to Chooks. We find that there are very strict policies surrounding the accessing of funds, especially foreign exchange here in Nigeria. What are your thoughts on that? We find that people who want to access money for travel or for schooling or just basically access the dollar, it's a, a lot more difficult. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, <clears throat> thank you for that question. So uh, you see, the major challenge is... Um, the more you keep preventing people from having access to these funds, these people will certainly look for a way, either illegal or legal, to get access to these funds. And you see, once they have access to these funds, what you're doing indirectly, you are creating an artificial scarcity. And because you're doing that, what happens is the demand will keep rising and the prices will keep skyrocketing. And I think that is not the right fix to this thing because people are sourcing for these dollars. They need these dollars. And the more you keep creating this artificial scarcity, you're just causing demand to keep skyrocketing. And that's a problem on its own. Because the guys that have access to these dollars, they become the, the, the champions in the playing field. And they determine the price. So you just find that, that it just keeps rising. And that's why some analysts are predicting that we might see prices at 1,000 naira to a dollar before the end of this year. I mean, we don't pray for that. I mean, I that, mean that, that a popular musician just said that recently, <laughs> David He said, the way dollar is going, we're going to pay 1,000 to a dollar. It's wow. quite scary. And that's Joe. unrealistic. It is quite scary because as at yesterday, uh, the, on the black market, the parallel market, even though it's not recognized by the CBA and there are people who have to go to the parallel market at the last resort. And what we saw yesterday was that to buy a dollar was 600 and uh, 600 and to sell was 605. Okay. And it keeps rising every day. So what would you suggest to be some of the ways in which we can mitigate this or we can regulate this? to ensure that you know, we don't keep having uh, an increase in the dollar rate. You've talked about the fact that we need to regulate this artificial scarcity that has been caused. Are there policies that maybe the government or the CBN should have introduced or should introduce to enable ease of access to the dollar and reduce this artificial scarcity? OK, so um, I will just uh, make reference or backtrack a little bit to what my CEO has said initially. Okay? Now, the truth is this. We need to encourage exports. We need to create safety. Investors need, you need to, you need to uh, prop up investor confidence. They need to be uh, confident in the economy they are coming to. I mean, come on, just like they say, uh, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So I can't imagine setting aside a huge chunk of my capital and it's not safe. It doesn't make any sense, okay? So the more the government um, takes care of safety, encourages uh, foreign direct investment, encourages um, exportation, encourages uh, small and medium scale enterprise, you know, encourages this business. One way or the other, you're creating demand for the Naira, you're creating uh, demand for the Naira, and therefore, um, uh, 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 you just have a domino effect, it begins to create a, um, uh, an inflow of dollars. So, in my own opinion, as much as possible, you need to look for ways by which you could actually export the skill set that we have here. We have a lot of skillful Nigerians there. We need to find a way of exporting that skill set outside. Mm. Let people get interested in these guys. Let it come in. Let, 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 uh, we, let us have an inflow of dollars. Let people demand for what we have, value that we have to give. The more we do this, we'll find out that, oh, they kind, gradually, gradually, there's going to be a balancing out in, in this um, you know, exchange rate difference over time. So until we begin to do that, we don't see the likelihood of that. And, right. and just to add this, yes, in my own opinion, then we have to look for a way out. All right. Just, just lastly, um, Sharma, very briefly, because we need to go for sports sure. now. Um, is there hope? Absolutely. <laughs> Never lose hope. There's always hope. Never, ever lose hope. All right. Okay. So, uh, Olive, I, I think that does it for, for us here. Uh, taking a look at this conversation, we had indeed promised the, the viewers that we're going to take a look at the, uh, the fall of the Naira. Of course, looking at the inf influence it has on the uh, economy, especially for Africa. And I want to say thank you so much uh, for, uh, to our guests who have joined thank us. Yeah. Um, Mr. Sharma, 
Thank, uh, thank you for being here. Of course, Chooks, thank you so much for being here as well. Thank, thank you for joining us. And Olive, thank you so much for being thank here you. as well. Okay, Olive. <laughs> thank you, Tisho, for being here as well. <laughs> All right. <laughs>